Hello everyone, this is James Shore with a special 100th episode of my Let's Play Test Driven Development video series. In this episode, we're going to take a look back at the last 25 hours of test driven development and how the design of the system evolved over that time. We started out with nothing and now we have a fully tested GUI and domain layer. And in this episode, we're going to look at how all that came to be. In the upper right hand corner of your screen, you can see a time. That's an approximation of how long the work took. Uh, the reality is slightly shorter, but that doesn't include research time. So, let's get started. I came into this project with the goal of replacing my retirement planning and budgeting spreadsheet, uh, but other than that I didn't really come into this with any preconceptions. I had no idea of the design I was going to create, or, and it showed, honestly. Uh, and that frustrated some video, uh, viewers, but it's genuinely how I approach new software development. You learn so much in the first few weeks of coding, or at least I do, uh, that my experience has been that preconceptions about design actually constrain the results rather than help. Um, when I've come into a project with, a, with an upfront design, even a, a vague one, I find that I change what I do to meet that design even when it's not the best thing for the software, uh, for the software design. So uh, as a result, I've discovered that I get better results when I let the code and design teach me what they need and that I really allow my design to react to what I learn in those first couple weeks particularly. So I spent Monday morning letting the code teach me what it needed. Uh, I started out in the domain, uh, it seemed like a sensible place to start, uh, working on a very simple model, which was a year-by-year -year stock market projection. Um, it was actually pretty difficult. I'm not a finances guy, and I don't understand the problem domain very well. Uh, the capital gains tax in particular gave me major headaches. Still, by lunchtime it was working, and I was factoring out the last few value objects. With a very simple domain layer under my belt, I was ready to tackle the UI. The goal was to get a walking skeleton. That's a very small application that includes all the important architectural components. Uh, in this case, it means a very simple domain layer, a basic UI, and some sort of persistence. So now that I had a very simple domain layer, I started looking at the UI. Interestingly, working on the UI took me straight back into the domain layer. I was using Java's Swing framework for the UI, still am, and it uses a fairly robust model view controller architecture. That makes it a lot easier to test things, uh, and it meant that I spent most of the afternoon's UI work on the stock market table model. That largely involved connecting back to my domain layer, which taught me that I needed a new domain abstraction. Uh, at this point, my model represented a single year, which you could ask for the following year and you know get a full projection, but the UI needed a class that represented the full multi-year projection. And I had started out by implementing that code directly in the UI inside the table model, but I quickly realized that it made more sense for that code to live in the domain layer, so I pulled it out into its own class. Um, that didn't take too long, and once I had that very bare-bones UI working, I was able to ch check the results against my real spreadsheet, and that showed a rounding error in my dollars class. So I dived fully back into the guts of the domain layer, uh, fixed the rounding error, and further refined the domain concepts, in particular making sure that the internal primitive of the dollars, the money class, which I called dollars, um, wasn't exposed. So at the end of the day, uh, end of Monday, I had a solid domain layer and a working UI. <laughs>
Tuesday morning was frustrating, very frustrating. Uh, I thought I had the domain layer all wrapped up, but when I checked the output of my program against the output of my spreadsheet, the results still didn't match, even though I'd fixed the rounding error. It was a classic case of doing the thing right, but not doing the right thing. And that's something TDD can't prevent, which is why it's so important to check your assumptions constantly. Uh, even when you're using TDD, you need to make sure that, yes, you're programming the, what you think you're going to program, because TDD is you know, checking your work in that way, but it cannot check to see that what you're programming is actually what you need to program. So you have to check your assumptions. Anyway, remember how I said that the capital gains tax caused me some grief on Monday morning? Well, it turns out that the abstraction for capital gains tax that I was using in the program wasn't the same as the one in the spreadsheet, so I was getting different results. Uh, neither one was technically wrong, or they were both equally wrong, but in different ways. Um, in fact, the spreadsheet model is probably too pessimistic. But since the goal of the application is to replace the spreadsheet, the application needs to match the spreadsheet's results exactly. Uh, that's what they call bug for bug compatibility. At any rate, I spent the first half of Tuesday morning beating my head against that problem. Uh, and the rest of the morning wasn't much more satisfying. Now that I had a simple UI, I wanted to style it. I wanted to see alternating colors in the rows and you know some basic stuff like that. I wasn't sure how to do that in Swing, so I spent the rest of the morning investigating tools and creating a spike solution to figure it out. But by lunchtime I was done and I was ready to do some production coding again. My progress was a lot more visible Tuesday afternoon. I spent that time solving tricky UI problems, uh, problems that were made trickier by needing tests. Very few UI frameworks are designed for testability. In fact, I, I don't think I've come across any at all that are really designed for testability. Uh, ironically, the best one I've found so far is jQuery for JavaScript, uh, believe it or not, and I think that has more to do with JavaScript being such a wide open language than any inherent testability built into the library. At any rate, the MVC nature of Swing makes it pretty easy to test the data you're presenting in the UI, but it doesn't make it easy to test that you're presenting that data the way you want it to. Uh, the first problem I needed to resolve, for example, on Tuesday afternoon, was making the stock market projection show up with alternating bands of color in the table. And it wasn't at all obvious how to do that with Swing. But the whole point of this series is to play with test-driven development, so I persevered, and with the help of pair partners Roy Oshrov and Kim Grossman, we were able to solve that problem. And I uh, was also able, later in the day, able to get core application frame under test, test the basic window behavior, and my first interactive text field for the system. So by the end of the afternoon, I had everything except for the very simplest instantiate the frame and get it going uh, stuff. I had everything under test. This brings up an important point for me. Um, these problems were hard, sure, but it didn't take that long to solve them. Often when I'm visiting teams doing TDD, I see that they're using it for the easy or obvious parts of their system, but they don't use it in the trickier areas, and those are the parts that actually need it the most. I understand there's a trade-off, but the benefits of TDD, of TDD are so great that it's worth persevering. Uh, at least, that's how it is for me. I know there's a learning curve, there's definitely one, but figuring out how to test an intractable library never takes as long as I fear it will. And once I know how to test something, that knowledge lasts forever. Wednesday morning found me hard at work in getting that first text field hooked up. Up until this point, the whole application just displayed static data. Now I needed it to react to changes entered by the user. 
Most of the design evolution for this happened in the UI layer, not the domain layer. I introduced a class called Application Model to mediate changes between components. The idea is that it would represent the state of the overall application in the same way that the stock market table model represents the state of the table. But the jury's still out on how well that works. That raises an interesting point. Uh, when, you're un when you're in uncharted territory, as this swing testing is for me, and I would say most serious application development is uncharted territory in some way. Um, it, anyway, when you're, in, when you're in uncharted territory, it's impossible to know whether the design decisions you're making are correct. You just have to take your best shot. And then as you work with the systems and the design, you figure out what his strengths and shortcomings are, which often leads to hand palming and you know, WTFs later. So a technique I use heavily is to try out ideas in miniature, like I do with the application model, the application model class. Uh, it seems like a good idea now, but I won't actually know for sure until I've had more experience with it. So I didn't flesh it out very much. I just did the bare minimum necessary to, you know, to get it working for what I had. And then as I continue developing the system, I'll watch that application model class with a very critical eye and see whether or not it grows well and whether it's, it, you know, it, it, it's flexible in the way I need it to be. And I'll use what I learned to either improve the design or swap in something completely different. Other than application model, most of the Wednesday morning development was, set, was spent on the text field. Um, I created a custom text field component that was focused solely on editing dollar amounts. And uh, as before, the challenges came from figuring out how to test it. The most basic functions were the most difficult, uh, figuring out how to test the behavior of the control when it lost behavior, uh, when it lost focus, for example. Um, but it was pretty much done at lunchtime. Wednesday afternoon brought the biggest design change to date. It was driven by the needs of the UI. I needed to handle the case of a user typing in illegal amounts cleanly, and the way I decided to handle that was to display an error in the table, uh, similar to how spreadsheets display errors. To support this, I introduced a variant of the null object pattern to my dollars class. That's the fundamental value object I used to represent money, and was one of the first things I created uh, back uh, late Monday morning. Uh, although at the time, I had no idea I was going to find this use for it. Anyway, the null object pattern allowed me to create two class, subclasses for dollars, one for legal amounts and one for illegal amounts. Uh, this allowed me to accept illegal input and have the domain layer handle it without any special cases. It just used the same logic as before. Um, I just needed the UI to display it differently. And this is where one of the most dis controversial design decisions I've made so far came in. Uh, illegal values are rendered with a special icon, positive values are rendered in black, and negative values are rendered in red. And rather than having the UI layer make those decisions, I actually delegate them to the dollar subclasses, valid dollars and invalid dollars. They have a render method on them that allows themselves to render themselves uh, onto the UI. And that apparent mixing of layers bothered some people. Like application model, this is a design experiment. Um, I do like how it keeps the dollars classes encapsulated and cohesive. cohesive. For example, um, you know, a dollars, a valid dollars knows if it's negative or not. Nobody has to ask it, are you negative? Um, but it does also seem to introduce excessive coupling between my UI and my domain objects. Um, so, I don't know, it's an interesting idea. I kind of like the way the design is going there. Uh, I think it has potential, but I'm going to keep a close eye on it. Um, I'm prepared, as before, I'm prepared to improve it or ditch it entirely uh, for, a better for a better approach if it doesn't work out. brings us to the present. 25 hours of coding. I've come a long way, but 25 hours isn't actually much time when it comes to programming and I have a long way to go. I'm still working on that walking skeleton. I've learned a lot since I started and you can see it in the way the design has evolved. Um, next, after the bare bones UI is done, I'm going to work on persistence and that will bring whole new design elements to the picture. 
So thanks for watching. In my next episode, which will be which will be released on Thursday, I'm going to continue putting the bones of the UI in place. And if you stick with this, I'm sure you're going to see some of the elements of that persistence layer come in as well. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.